What's going on, everybody? Happy Thirsty Thursday, another edition here of DBC. Dago Bet Selly presented by Points Bet. Chris Meany and Eric Young here with you. Nine games to break down on the ice tonight in the NHL. Appreciate everyone taking the time to hang out. If you are watching live on our YouTube page, smash the like button. If you have any comments, any questions, leave them there. We'll talk about them throughout the show uh, as we inch closer to the end of the regular season. I know a lot of people are battling in their fantasy hockey leagues as well. Could be semifinal week for you, championship week. Uh, again, any questions, we are here for you. You're listening on iTunes and Spotify. We would greatly appreciate it. If you could rate, review, subscribe, we want to show the bosses that it's just not all about college basketball, NFL, NBA, MLB, right? <laughs> we want to show the bosses that uh, you guys appreciate the show. We appreciate you guys for hanging out with us like you guys do. So if you can rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, smash the like button, subscribe to our YouTube page. EY is rocking what looks like the Sea of Red, Calgary Flames. It, it is uh, just not a lot of sleep last night. Uh, I'm working on about, uh, I don't know, maybe two hours of sleep. And uh, But I wanted to wear a Matthew Kachuk jersey because I think he's going to score tonight. And this is my Calgary Flames, Matthew Kachuk. You're going to have to trade that in for uh, a Panthers, Matthew Kachuk. Um, I got okay. Panthers, but it's a Barkoff. Barkoff. You know what? I'm kind, I'm kind of worried about the Panthers at the moment just because we have some futures on them. Big Panthers show here. Yep. They haven't played their best hockey over the past 10. We, we talked about it on Tuesday. haven't played their best hockey. The Habs beat them the other day, but we also didn't know that Matthew Kuchuk wasn't going to play due to an illness. And Carter Hege is sidelined week to week. And that does scare me with the playoffs starting here in like two weeks. I, I don't know the, the status of him, but if they're going to go on a deep run, they're going to need uh, Carter Verhage on the squad. There's no question about it. Um, okay, here we go. Troy's in the house. Columbus money line. This team is not losing to the New York Islanders. <laughs> Love here it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, morning fan. Chemansky's in the house. We That was scary yesterday with Bet365 taking away the milestone points. I mean, they were still there on the app, but you couldn't parlay them. Uh, which we've had some success. Hit a 45 to 1 the other day with the Golden Knights top line of Barbershev, Eichel, and Marcia. So, a great call by you with the Marcia. So, goal he scored again. Uh, the trio had, I think, three points each, but they had two points each in the first period alone. Alex Nylander, 10 goals in 17 games, make it 11 goals in 18 games for Alex Nylander. Yeah, we'll see what kind of shooting percentage and where he fits into the Blue Jackets lineup next year. Uh, but certainly a pretty good run for him there. Daily Handle with Jordan Allen. Good morning, Means and EY and everybody. A little Zach Wierenski here. Um, giddy up. Uh, Adam, I am too, means they just look off. Serious value on Tarasenko tonight. Yeah, really good value on him the other night too. Um, when there was the movement, no Verhaggy, no Matthew Kachuk. He was near plus money, even money for a point. He picked up a point. He's been good of late. And uh, I thought he he was maybe going to be sneaky in DFS because it was a late scratch with those Florida guys, but he's still yeah. like 25% owned in a contest with 5,000 people. So <laughs> people seem to be on him. Horn! Jay Felicio uh, put the Marcia So video for us up on TikTok. Follow us on our socials, Instagram, TikTok. And um, that was a nice little, nice little video he put together for us. Mark my words. Zach Wierenski is going to be a top 10 fantasy defenseman next year. <laughs> you know, I hear this all the time. I'm pretty sure I heard it from you, you know, last year as well, Troy. And it's not a shot on you. I think when he's healthy, he is yeah. probably a top 10 fantasy defenseman. Can't stay healthy, he's though. There. The usage is there, but unfortunately he can't just like Patrick Line and a couple other blue jacket players there. Uh, but yeah, settings off in NHL 24 top 10, yeah. top 10 defenseman. Settings Robbie Hawks, Edmonton, uh, the injury settings. That is Edmonton in playoff play. form. All that, all that talent kick at one goal. Well, one Jake Ottinger looks like the guy that we thought he would look like when we talked about Dallas. Two teams, for me personally, that I'm in on. The Stars and the Panthers. I'm a little bit concerned about the Panthers, but these are two teams that I think we... I don't want to speak for you, but I think we both loved before the season started. Yep. Stanley Cup futures on both teams. The Stars have won eight in a row and 13 of their last 15. I think that they're the most complete team in the NHL. Uh, right there with Florida. I just think that any given night, their top three lines can come at you, whatever line. It could be the Hints line. James, uh, Wyatt Johnson and Jamie Bennett have been on an absolute tear, and then Sagan and Marsh, Marchman and 
and Duchesne have been awesome most of the year as well. And Jake Ottinger now has a shutout streak of nearly 200 minutes, so he is cooking. The Oilers are just, um, Robbie, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's going to be a tough. It's in the West. It's a bloodbath to get out of there. But Edmonds, Edmonton's a team that I don't fully believe in. Uh, I just I don't know about their defense. don't know about their goaltending. But we'll see what happens in the playoffs. should be fantastic. But before we get there, we do have – Nine games to talk about on the ice tonight in the NHL. So here is what the slate looks like. We get the Bruins and the Carolina Hurricanes. We get the Lightning played last night. Nikita Kucherov broke his own franchise record for points. I believe he has 129 as the Bolts took care of the Leafs last night. The Penguins are still hanging around. A big one here between the Pens and the Capitals. The Panthers and the Senators. The Islanders and the Blue Jackets. The Avs and the Wild should be a good one there. Calgary and Winnipeg. Looking for the Jets to get back on track here and get going offensively. The Blues and your Preds. It's a good one. Uh, important for... <laughs> Uh, St. Louis for sure. And then the Kings who played last night, took care of the Kraken, have a date with this team called the San Jose Sharks. Where do you want to start, EY? Where are we going here tonight? What's what's uh, one of your favorite plays on the board? Let's start strong. Um, there, there are some interesting games. I mean, the classic of Pittsburgh, Washington, both of them kind of battling. OVSB, exciting. Let's start there. Okay, let's start there. Pittsburgh and Washington, you know, it does seem like um, some of these teams in the Eastern Conference that are fighting for that uh, playoff spot, they don't, they don't want it. Uh, Pittsburgh, though, is playing. Right? Crosby is has taken his game to another level here. He's not going to have Gensel if they do make the playoffs, of course. But uh, we have Washington holding down the final wild card spot, 82 points, tied with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, the Caps do have a game in hand, and we have the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, with 75 games played, 79 points. With a win tonight in regulation, EY, Pittsburgh would jump up to 81 points, and they would be just one point back of Washington. So it's pretty possible that something could happen for the ends, right? Wilds, just unbelievable. Uh, what you got on your card for this game? Uh, I would say, like, there's a lot of people complaining about it, and, like, None of these teams want to get it. I mean, this is exactly what the NHL wants, right? Like, they want all these teams to feel invested. They, they want to feel like they could make the playoffs, too. And, I mean, clearly, in that situation, you know, there's four or five teams there. Like, a couple wins, a couple losses, the, the order's completely reversed. You know, and I think those odds do not favor Pittsburgh, obviously. I don't think the odds favor Detroit either, but that doesn't mean that they're eliminated or that it's even far-fetched. It's it's wild at, at this point. We're talking about Pittsburgh still being able to make it. Um, but here we are. So I'm going to go Crosby plus 150. And Malkin scored a really nice goal the other day. He has not been of Evgeny Malkin this year, but they're going to give me plus 240. When he feels like it, it, it would appear like he still is a, a very good hockey player on the – Washington side, OV at 130, and Dylan Strome at 220. Yeah, those seem to be the guys. Uh, I like Pittsburgh. I mean, we talked about Pittsburgh beating uh, De- uh, beating the Devils the other night as our as our dog here on this show. It didn't look good early, but, man, what a collapse by the Devils in that game. They were up in the third period, and then they left four or five goals in. So you get Pittsburgh here at minus 110. I, I just believe in them a little bit more than I believe in Washington at the moment. The Capitals are dealing with a couple injuries. Uh, Pittsburgh's playing a pretty good brand of hockey. They've won two straight. They've won four or five mixed in there. The loss to Troy's Blue Jackets, but they beat Carolina 4-1. They took care of the Rangers 5-2. So they're, they are playing pretty good. I actually don't have a whole lot that I like in this game. Uh, we'll see if Riley Smith stays up on that top line. I, he started the game on the top line against the devils. And then he also like in the third line, he was in the third period. He's back with uh, Evgeny Melkin in that game. Uh, Daily Faceoff has him penciled in to play with Russ and to play with uh, Crosby. But I, I I'll keep an eye. It's like a, I got it written down here right now. Anyways, Riley Smith for a point at plus one twenty is one that stands out for me. And a Crosby and a Crosby and a Russ same game parlay for these guys uh, to hit the score sheet tonight. Points over at Bet three six five. That's the way I would go. I'm not in on the Capitals. I just if I was to pick one, it'd be like what you said, Obechkin or Strom. Just don't see. They just don't score a lot of goals. Yep. And I just don't know who else really like. I look at their lines; they're all scattered. So I don't really. 
I'm not really feeling a whole lot, honestly, from this game. But Crosby and Russ plus 105 for a point at bet 365. Eric Carlson over two and a half shots at minus 105 is interesting. And then Riley Smith for the point there at plus 120 from DraftKings. All right, we'll move on. What's next here? Boston, Carolina. Should be a good one. Should be a good one. Bruins went into Nashville, took care of the the Preds, had a, a shout out there from Allmark. And of course, I'm up against Allmark in almost every fantasy hockey format here. So that one oh, just geez. really hurt. Uh, <laughs> just pained me. I was like, come on, Nashville. Let's score a goal here tonight for me. Um, what you have on your card for this game? This is another game where I'm just I'm not feeling a whole lot. I will shout out Pavel Zaka first before I throw to you. At minus 110 over at BetMGM, we were on Pavel Zaka in the Preds game. We had to sweat it out. He did get two points, but they came in the last couple minutes of that game. Really good hockey game. It was tight. It had like playoff atmosphere to it. But Pavel Zaka has got points in four straight games. He's got six points over that span. And he's actually hit the score sheet here in 12 of his past uh, 14 games, rather. Most of them are assists. He does have five, six, seven goals. Over that span, mostly the last month here from March 4th and we are at April 4th. So the last month he's been uh, really productive and he just continues to play five and five and and power play time uh, with passes. And that's really what's important to me. So I think that there's pretty good value on Zach at minus 110 for a point. We'll just continue to ride this thing out. Yeah, I'm going uh, pasta 120, Marshand at um, 270, Gensel at 170 and Svechnikov at 230. All right. Uh, who wins the game? Man, I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to watch uh, the Boston Preds game, but I watched uh, a lot of it when I got home because I'm insane. Uh, Black Crows are one of the coolest oh, yeah. ever, of all time. How was that? Phil they are one of the that. I, I mean, I can't even begin to explain to you how good they were. It's hard to believe. Nice. He's like almost nice. 60 years old and... Yeah, it was incredible. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean Boston coming off a, a win like that. You know, um, I know they're on the road. I know Carolina's very good at home, but it, it feels like Boston is kind of feel starting to find their stride, which is is terrifying for teams in the East all over again. Yeah, I I'm gonna lean with. That's a tough one to call. Um, I'm going to, it's, it's really tough to Carolina minus 150, like to get Boston at plus 135 on the road, bet 365 is pretty interesting to me, but I do think that the Hurricanes will win this game. I think Seth Jarvis is interesting at minus 145 for a point as well. It's, I mean, he's been really, really juiced over the past couple of games because that Carolina Hurricanes line with Ajo and Gensel, they've just been so good since uh, they acquired Jake Gensel from the Pittsburgh Penguins. So if you look over at uh, just because it's the matchup tonight at 365, we can get some pretty decent odds on like Ajo and Gensel for a point. Minus 120 is okay. You cleared Jarvis in there. It's plus 160. But I think I'd rather just maybe go eat a little bit of the juice, drink a little bit of it with Gensel and Ajo, and then take uh, Jarvis alone as a point there. Ovi does love scoring and playing Pittsburgh. I remember when those two teams played in the playoffs and they both had a hat trick in a game. I think he's got goals in four of his last five against Pittsburgh and five of his last seven games against the Penguins, Ovechkin. So, uh, and he has been playing pretty good. I'm hurt, EY. I don't know what you what you said there. Hurt. Oh, Hurricanes. Jay's a big Hurricanes guy. Uh, Boston and Carolina here tonight. Tough game to cap all the way around. I feel like it will be like the Preds game, very much like a playoff feel. I agree. Low scoring, uh, checking, but I'm willing to roll the dice on Zaka. That's at minus 145. I'm kind of in on that one. Uh, Tampa, Montreal. Let's do this one. We'll take care of the left side of the board here. Those that are watching live. So the Bolts played last night and had the win against the Maple Leafs. We mentioned Nikita Kucherov. Another decent night from him. Uh, and again, he breaks his own franchise record that he set. Not bad. Not bad, right? Pretty good at the game of hockey. You know, the MVP race, according to Vegas, is locked up with Nathan McKinnon there. Uh, but man, Kucherov and McDavid, certainly in the conversation, those will be the three nominees, uh, 129 points for Nikita Kucherov. Pretty good. Um, my thinking here with the bolts and I don't know, there's no injuries. Sometimes 
I don't know, teams may rest some guys here at this point of the season, but I don't see a scenario where Tampa's at 91 points in that first wild card spot. They're four back of the Leafs. They got another game against Toronto. Maybe they can catch them. Do they want to catch them? Do they want to push it to catch them? Do they care about that? Washington, whoever that second wild card team is not going to be able to catch them. Uh, the Habs are not going with um, Montembo tonight. So uh, I probably I haven't leaned to Tampa, but man, the Habs keep hanging around with teams and they keep winning hockey games, surprisingly. Uh, but one guy that we stressed. On this show, he was the headline for me at trade deadline. I thought was the sneakiest winner was Anthony DeClaire. This yeah. has always been an Anthony DeClaire show. Yes. Uh, getting back to our athletic days at four stack lines, Anthony DeClaire. Yep. Uh, I got him in every one of my fantasy hockey leagues, I think. And I was looking at this spot in particular last night and then tonight having the back-to-back two games there for Anthony DeClaire. Continues to play with Kucherov and point at five and five continues to play with those guys. So I, I really don't know why he's, you know, he's been plus money for most of this run in Tampa and he's checking in at minus one Oh five. What I really like is the assist prop too at plus 200. You're going to give me plus 200. Like Vegas is thinking that Braden point is hitting the score sheet. Kucherov has a good chance to get two points. So Anthony declare here tonight at plus 200 for the apple, I'd say like almost two units on the point. Minus 105 is one of my favorite plays. And then the assist, like maybe a unit there. Not going to get top power play time, but he's, it's interesting that he's plus 525 for a power play point. And the Habs are top five in penalties, and they have the bottom five penalty kills. So um, not breaking any news. I know you guys have heard me talk about Declare way too often in Zaka, but what? hey, if it's, if it's working, let's go back to it. What you got on your card there? Uh, yeah, Kucherov, and uh, I'm going to go uh, Paul as well. Um Playing on the top power play. Uh, he's at plus 320, so I really like that. Good player. Came out at the start of the year, was like scoring, and uh, I mean, he kind of slid off the statistically a, a little bit, but I think he's a really important player for them. Uh, him and Hagel, I think, like just two guys that, that they really need to play well and show up to make everything that Tampa wants to do work. So I uh, love him, love Paul as a player. Uh, Montreal side, I'm going Caulfield at 190. I'm going back to New Hook, plus 340. Can't quit him. Can't quit the old Newfie. St. John's Newfoundland. Uh, Alex Newhook. Um, man, decent odds here, too. Like, not decent, but, you know, Caulfield at minus 165. Like, that's a little bit too steep, but usually he's at minus 190. Uh, I like the shot prop for Caulfield. Um, he scored the other night. I know he hasn't been shooting or scoring, but he's still been shooting. Tampa played last night. I don't know. Like, I got this weird feeling about I don't know, Tampa should win the game. But Slavkoski, I think, deserves to be in the conversation with Duclair. It's just like a, a decent value at minus 125. That, it's just that line. They score every night. We talked about Suzuki scoring on Tuesday. He had a couple goals. Again, just continues to, to score. Slavkoski's got, man, this guy is just on a run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten of his last 11 games, he's picked up a point. He has 11 shots on goal over his last two games. Uh, so those are the guys. And I think Sorelli's actually playing pretty good hockey, too. This one could be a high scorer. No Vasilevsky, no Matembo. sorelli has got four points in his last two games. Uh, okay, so just going to narrow it down. Declare point, Slavkowski point, Cole Caulfield four shots, Kucherov 2.9, plus 100, 2.9. Like Not bad. I like it, too. Uh, and they kind of correlate to like if he has a two point night, Braden Point may have a two point night. Braden Point, I gotta add Braden Point. Bet Rivers is hanging a really good shot prop number there for Braden Point, minus one seventeen at Bet Rivers. I saw a little bit of juice this morning on uh, three six five, but that's that's not too bad. Habs over the last month have been in the top five in in allowing shot attempts, so pretty good there. Let's see what the chat is saying. There's some comments here. Um, Shemansky's on Duclair, one of my favorites of the night. Odds still aren't reflecting his role. I agree. Robbie is on board. Um, 
Meany, great call on Panarin last night. Had a free bet from Dinger Tuesday and put it all on him for two points. Nice. Got that one, uh, I think, late. I think late, right? Started off the game, I believe, with a, with a goal, but got it a little bit later on. We love that. Love Dinger Tuesday as well. We had a couple correct calls on the SiriusXM show. Uh, Dana Martinez and myself have been talking some baseball on SiriusXM. Uh, we're four days a week. Uh, channel 87 from 2 Eastern to 3 Eastern. Want to hang out? We'll be talking about the NHL. We'll talk about the line brawl, actually. We have that in the rundown today. So it's not all full baseball, but that was something last night. The way that the Rangers and the Devils game started five fights, four refs. Lundquist watching it on the TNT broadcast like a kid on Christmas, man. He's just clapping and, and cheering. Anson Carter's in front. Like, you can't tell me that these. These NHL players don't like fighting, man. Like they just get amped and amped for this. Um, three six five stopped. I think we broke them the other day, <laughs> but they're back. I noticed that they're back today. Came in corner. So three six five stopped offering milestone points. You could still bet it milestone, but you couldn't put it into a same game parlay yesterday. But I believe they're back today. So double check. I saw it this morning. Uh, so we're back, baby. As Adam Schmansky said in our FTN Discord. Like the the Vegas crew, we're back. Um, it's a Matthew Kachuk Flames jersey, is what Eric is is rocking today. The old sea of red, nice, 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 nice. Uh, okay, we'll keep things rolling here. A lot, a lot to like, I think, in that Montreal Tampa Bay game. Florida and Ottawa, this one as well, probably a lot to like with some goals uh, on both sides here. So we have Florida checking in and Ottawa at home. Um, I did see some interesting odds last night for, for a team in Florida that we really like, but the struggle has been real. Minus 150 for BetMGM is the best number I'm seeing. The Sens are checking in at plus 130 here. Uh, again, we'll have to keep an eye. You're you're rocking Kachak, so I'm, I assume you, you're you calling him to score a goal here tonight. I would I I give me plays. I haven't heard anything, though. Yeah, I am. I actually, uh, I got both the Kachuk boys uh, on on okay. the, on the sheet today. Reinhardt at 105 and Matthew Kachuk at 145. Uh, the last couple of games, I love watching Florida play. It's just chaos and physical and yeah. it, it's just, it's just it's a really fun brand of hockey to watch. It's different than what a lot of other teams are doing. Uh, it's effective, obviously, and I think effective because not a lot of other teams are doing it and playing them is likely very irritating and you're thinking oh you know wednesday night let's take it easy and they're flying around and slashing you and just dogging every pocket it's just really fun to watch so i got reinhardt at 105 matthew kachuk at 145 on the ottawa side brady kachuk at 145 and timmy stutes the at 245 to score timmy uh, so pretty good odds here for Vladimir Tarasenko, as we talked earlier. Fun little revenge spot for him. He spent a minute in Ottawa. Things didn't work out for him as a senator. Most times, second, third line, second power play. Uh, but here in Florida, it started off pretty good for him. He had a 3.9, I think, in his second game, which is something he only did with the Senators twice in like 50-some-odd games. But the last couple games have been really good for him. He's got four points and a goal in his last two games. He has seven shots over that span, and he's hit the score sheet in five of his last six games. Yeah, he's he three really goals good. over that span. Looking really good. Of course, there's no Carter Verhage. Uh, so he is playing some five and five hockey with Alexander Barkov, which of course is uh, a benefit to Vladimir Tarasenko's game. But he is minus 125 at DraftKings for a point. He's plus 150 at DraftKings for an assist, but also plus 150 for three shots on goal tonight. Again, seven shots in his last two hockey games. Vladimir Tarasenko, a big boost here in ice time. There were some moments earlier in March, 12, 13, 14 minutes. 1548 two games ago and 1746 in his last game, uh, which I do believe is the most he's played as a Florida Panther. So he is going to benefit over these next few days without Carter Verhage in the lineup. So Vladimir Tarasenko minus 125 for a point plus 150 for three shots. Uh, also, maybe a little bit of a sprinkle. It's like an assist or a two point night, which you could probably get a two to one, which is maybe probably better worth your time. Like, instead of the assist, like what if he has two goals tonight Then you get the two points at, at nearly two to one. So we like Tarasenko here tonight. Um, I like Florida. I think I'm just going to take Florida to win. They're yeah. still good. Minus Nobody one. Nobody likes Ottawa. Not even me anymore. 
<laughs> Their fans don't even like them, right? No, I'm kidding, man. I think Coach's Corner is in here sometimes. Or, um, yeah, the the juice on Brady Kachuk. I think um, I, I'm not in on the minus 167. I can't do that. I just doesn't feel right for me. Uh, maybe in a parlay, but I think if you're a Bet Rivers user at minus 143 or a DraftKings user at minus 145, I could certainly get get behind that one. Going back to Sam Bennett points here tonight, kind of like Tarasenko. So I like Bennett too. Uh, got burned. I don't want to look into it too much, but I we did get burned. He had two shots. He was stuck on two, but uh, the previous two games before that, he had three and he had a goal. Uh, you know, if if there's no Matthew Kachuk, I'm not interested, even though he scored in the last game, but he only played 13 minutes and the goal came in the final minute of the hockey game. He just, he really wasn't noticeable without Matthew Kachuk. Like he was playing with Nick cousins and I forget who else. So it just, it just wasn't great for his game, but I'd say Matthew does play tonight. Um, so yeah, if he does play, I, I would like it a little bit more. How about Reinhardt? How about Reinhardt for three shots? Um, that one's a really good one. Actually, probably one of the better shot prop ones tonight. You like Reinhardt uh, every night. You've been calling. You've been all over this guy all year long. Uh, minus one thirty six at Bat Rivers. Like that is a miss price. That's probably going to go away as soon as I'm done a show. It's going to go away. Most books have minus one sixty, but Bet Rivers is hanging minus one thirty six for three shots tonight on Sam Reinhardt. His last few games: four, three, four, five, two, four. Like this guy's been a shooter all year long. He's up to fifty two goals in the season. What a campaign! And something yeah. that you always talk about. Hey, what, is it a coincidence that it's a contract year? No. <laughs> no, it, no, I mean, it, you played hockey your whole life. Like, what could be more motivating than that, right? Like, I mean, these guys are all cycle competitors. They want to be good players. You know, they, they, they want to win. They want to make money. But if it comes as a surprise to you that – these guys are able to find the extra bit of effort, the extra bit of ice or the extra bit of whatever it is the year that they're going to get paid. You know, it's, it's something that you should really be paying attention to fantasy hockey wise and definitely batting wise, because this has been going on forever and will continue to go on. Money is the great motivator, especially for guys. Everybody in the NHL is good. Every, I mean, every single player and, None of it comes easy and, you know, putting in the extra work makes the most sense when you have the easiest avenue to make money. Right. Yeah. And I think in in sports like this and in particular, maybe uh, basketball, like you can kind of overtake a game and... I mean, all these athletes are are going to. I mean, you've heard it before. Contract year, they're going to put you know food on the plate on the on the dinner table for their families, especially certain players. Like I'm talking about Juan Soto with the Yankees, who turns down a 450 million dollar deal so we can get 500. We're talking about other players that are like, hey, like, can I get to two million dollars here as a third line player? Like they they really are maybe more focused in tune, take care of things, willing to battle through some injuries to stay on the ice and just certain things like that. So I'm a believer in it as well. Uh, the Matthew Kachuk, Shane Pinto, and Drake Batherson line is interesting tonight. You are on Brady. Um, there's some talk in the chat about Drake Batherson. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I thought you said, yeah, there it is. Drake Batherson minus 125 for a point is pretty good. Bet 365 for these guys to hit the score sheet at plus 350. Borowski has looked a little uh, uneasy yeah, over there. I think it's, yeah. So maybe that top line gets uh, gets in on the action. So plus 350 for a point. And just to uh, show you, K-Man Corner, I am seeing the milestone available to you. And it is 30 to 1 for those guys to have two points. Proceed with caution. All right, Senators, I'm back. I'm back in. <laughs> He's back, baby. <laughs> I think Florida may win the game, but it's the odds yeah. are interesting to me. But Borowski, it if there's a time to pick on Florida, it's probably right now. I don't know if they're just like, you know yeah. what? We can't catch Boston. This is Let's... where you find value, right? Like we see this in fantasy yeah. hockey too. Like even teams that are bad are going to have players that score and acquire and, and acquire points. Like if you picked Mikel Grandlin in the last spot of your draft this year and held him all year, you're, you probably did very well. You know, yeah. There, yeah. there's always players like this out there available at the end of your drafts, you know, with these crazy odds where people aren't betting them, um, you know, it, so, you know, pay attention. Like, do I think that Ottawa is going to win tonight? No. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be willing to bet on Ottawa winning tonight because they've been brutal. They've been brutal this year. 
but there's tons of good players here. Um, I love that. I love that. There that, is. That call. There, they could, uh, we could see some goals, right? Like this just feels yeah. like a game where it could be like a six, five game. We get yep. Tarasenko, we get the Kachuk boys scoring goals. Um, Reinhardt and Barkov has been one of my favorite one, two punches for a same game parlay, but that's like minus minus one forty five. but that top line at plus three fifty and 30 to one for a yep. two point night, maybe a Giroux and Stutzla. You got Stutzla to score. Maybe they connect as the same game, but the truth is like Florida's lost eight of 10. And Bobrovsky hasn't looked great and they're dealing with injuries and the Sens have won five of six. So this could be a really competitive game, high scoring. Uh, I think it's, I think this game in Montreal and Tampa are my two favorite games in terms of DFS and, and maybe attacking some goal scorers here. And this one here next, New York and Columbus, I actually don't have a whole lot here. Troy's on the blue jackets. Um, we talked about the Islanders in 60 against Chicago the other day. We talked about how you'd have to sweat that one out. And my goodness, did you ever. Uh, but the Islanders still found a way uh, to get it done. And they are in this thing. They are hanging in this thing. 81 points. They're one back of the Washington Capitals. They also have to leapfrog the Detroit Red Wings there. So this is just everything matters here uh, in this game. And I know Troy's in on the Blue Jackets, and I understand that the Islanders can't score goals. And it doesn't really matter to me. The best player on the ice tonight is going to be Sorokin, and I'm going to pick the Islanders to win the game. Uh, I want the Islanders to lose. I'm going to be back in the Blue Jackets because I want Detroit to play, and uh, I love Troy. Fair, so fair. Um, fair. I love Troy too. I love, don't get I, me wrong. I didn't, I say, love Troy I didn't too. say you didn't. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you can be cold blooded, and I'm going to take that into consideration when I make bets. The New York Islanders. I got Horvat and Nelson. It's unlikely that either of these bums score, but uh, that's who I would pick if I was forced to. And uh, Columbus, oh Vorkanoff. I feel like yeah. Troy's been telling us about this guy for six he years. Has. He's and, been spot on. And and he's been right. And he's awesome player. And he's awesome to watch. He's big and can skate. And he's mean. Uh, he's on the top uh, the top line and in spring, the top power play. And he's 320. Uh, and I'm going to go back to Marashenko, too, playing the point on the power play, plus 250. Dude can shoot the puck. I mean, obviously, the, there's something going on with the confidence right now. There was a, a while there where he was the only one scoring goals for them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going uh, Vorkanov and Marashenko, the Russian twins. I mean, he's certainly getting an opportunity here with no Boone Jenner, right? Vorkanov, yeah. Johnny, and uh, Nylander. It is an interesting line tonight. Bo Horvat, Bo Horvat minus 135 for three shots is... It's one of my favorite shot props. Uh, I think we we talked about that one just the other day. It's a little bit of juice. Feels awful when you give a shot prop or a point prop that's like minus 145 or something and it doesn't hit, but we're getting minus 135 tonight. The Blue Jackets are still a team that gives up a lot of rubber. Horvat's got goals in back-to-back -back games. He had the five shots the other night, playing a lot, uh, leaned on a lot here, back with Barzell. So I think the, the mini little... Two legs, same game parlay on those two guys. You can do that over at DraftKings as well if you wanted to. Barzell and Horvat plus one ten. Um, yeah, that's a great call by you. I think uh, Nylander. I don't want to pick these guys to get points or scores goals. I just feel like it's going to be a low scoring game tonight. Like, don't you have a feeling that this one's going to be like a two one? I mean, the total is six. There's six and a half. Juice to the under at minus 134. I see plus 102 under six. I feel like this is going to be like a 2-1 game, maybe a 3-2 game. Uh, but Nylander at minus 115 for – we got away from him a little bit, but I don't mind his shot prop tonight. He had three in the last game. He's been playing a lot, man, like 23 minutes the other night. He had the two-goal game against the Avs. Uh, yeah. Minus 115 for three shots. He's plus 105 for a point. And – um what were the odds on Veronica for a goal? Um, they were, where's my, oh, uh, plus, plus 320 good. from FanDuel. That's, that's real nice. That's real, yeah, that's real good. I got that in a wild bet. No, I'm going to give it the end of the show here. Yeah, you're not going to get uh, like a first line center at that price too often. So nope. pretty good. There's 14 comments. I got to, it's first good. line center and centering the top power play. He's a good player. player here. He is a good player. Reinhardt McCann have been great to bet on this season. Neck and neck in my uh, MVP race for myself. 
Uh, surprised EY, you're a big sense fan. He's surprised uh, that you're a big sense. It was. Fan. Yeah, he was. He's not, I guess. Okay, sweet. Let's go. Got to support you. I got to do it. Uh, over the last 10 games, Harrisoff, 935, save percentage, 243 goals against average. Also 99th in uh, percentile and save percentage on high danger chances in the entire season. Is that true? Is that correct? Uh, I haven't looked at the high danger save percentage lately, but I, I trust you. I believe you. Your numbers, obviously, I, you're, I you're around this morning. morning. And- you know, fantasy league that I'm still alive in. So I'm thinking Let's about go. your boy, big Dave save Riddick here tonight. I don't want to uh, jump the gun too early, but I do believe he's going to get the start tonight, right? Against the sharks. It looks that way. Yeah. It's kind of been bad lately. Ugh. He's had four goals in two of his, <laughs> two of his last three games, but uh, I need a W and I'm, I'm a roll of dice on that one. Rivers cut point and Reinhardt, the shot props. I just got rid of them. <laughs> So it's like what there were two really good prices here tonight what they just i sometimes people just hammer the bets and then they go away for a bit and then they come back at what it will be a worse price uh i'm here for troy's islanders i get it Teres- Teresov has better stats than sorokin do not bet the islanders come on he's not better than sorokin <laughs> oh my goodness maybe playing better than him but he's not better than him uh, did y'all talk yet about how disappointing the Oilers played last night was the most shameful game this season? We didn't. We just gave love to Dallas. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I just think that, yeah, the Oilers didn't play great, but I think it's more about Dallas. I think it's more about the Stars. They've won eight straight. They've won 13 of 15. Jake Ottinger's on a run. Shutout streak going. I think they're just a better team than Edmonton. I think they're more complete. These two teams play each other in the playoffs. I wouldn't think twice. I'd say Dallas wins it. Uh, they can just come at you in waves. You got three lines you can score. The Oilers have one and a half. It's really it. Um, so I, I really like I really like the the stars, but it was a disappointing game, and I think they have the Avs next. So uh they gotta get going. They gotta get going for sure. Get on a little bit of a, a run uh before the playoffs. Speaking of the Avs, Colorado and Minnesota in here. We should see Georgiev tonight. Lundqvist ranked his goalies in the Western Conference last night on the TNT broadcast. He had Georgiev at like eight. Um, yeah, he had um, he had the, the LA duo the ahead K. of him. <laughs> yeah, I was I wasn't like listening. I just had it on in the in the in the corner, and it was like Lundqvist goalies in the West ranked, and Hellebuck was one. He had Stuart Skinner three. Uh, I forget who he had two. Charles. He had Stuart Skinner three, and he had Ottinger four, but he had the Kings do ahead of Georgiev. I think he had maybe Soros out five or four or five or something. He was in the Ottinger range, but so, but Skinner stood out to me being ahead of Ottinger and being ahead of Soros. So I was like a little taken back by that, but hey, he's the king. Uh, and yeah. if there's anyone that could talk goalies, it's it's certainly him. But I, I didn't hate the call on Georgiev. He hasn't been all that great. Like I've been saying this all year. I own this guy in fantasy. It's like, yeah, great. He's got 37 wins with the over on the 34 and a half. We'll, we'll get that, you know, the future. He's got a 901 save percentage. Like, he's just, um, this is like hot and cold, man. He really ruined my ratios certain games, certain he's games mid. in fantasy. Just yeah. Whatever. That's what the kids say. He's mid. What you got for this game tonight? Um, oh, geez. This is, mm, I'm not pretty soft. Read my writing. Got Caprice yes. off. Let's see if he gets I mean, goal scores. That I can Goldie. always make out Caprice off. I'm going to go uh, Marco Rossi at plus 340. He's not in the top power play, but center uh, or the, the second power play, and he's been good uh, for them for a lot of the year. Really cool. You know, like they weren't sure if he was going to play in the NHL again. Problems with his breathing from complications from COVID and all this other stuff. Uh, Colorado side, McKinnon, of course. It, it's negative 110, but I don't care. And uh, Casey Middlestad at plus 330. Nice. It's good value on, on Middlestad as well. It's had some nice moments so far with the Avs. This team won't do anything. And, and I know it's just one player, but they won't go on a deep run if they don't have Nachushkin in their lineup. And I fully believe that. I just, I feel like they're almost a one line team when he's not playing. Like you got McKenna Narayan and great. Duran, you can rotate through Duran and Lekkinen up there. Um, but they need to have Valerie Nuchushkin in this lineup if they're going to go on any run here. That just That's really how I feel about them. But McKinnon, 
Maybe this one, K-Man Corner, will leave as well. Bet Rivers is hanging minus 136 for five shots for Nathan McKinnon. Most books are at minus 166. I also like the two-point night for McKinnon at minus 120. Uh, big game, uh, both sides here uh, tonight. I think Colorado does uh, find a way to squeeze out a victory here. We did get McCann with 10 seconds left, and that one was juice. It was minus 157, I think, for three shots. I was kicking myself for putting it in. But he got an empty net goal with 10 seconds left. Sometimes the hockey gods are just on your side. <laughs> Robbie was sweating it as well. I was sweating that with one with the K-Man corner. True, they got their their true. They got in their head in that game. Man, Dallas is just good. Uh sneaky bet of the day. Miles Wood over two and a half shots plus 150. I thought the sneaky bet maybe Tarasenko. Maybe you're onto something there, Shemansky, with um Miles Wood. Uh, Bruzis91, good morning. Welcome in. Dallas top line, absolutely phenomenal. You're right. The books haven't caught up yet. He's been a wagon lately. Uh, good morning, EK. Yul Erickson Eck. Yeah, I, I mean, I just don't know what to do about Eck. Um, shot prop is good. It's usually at three and a half, uh, two and a half today, juiced. So I think he's somebody that you could put into a parlay. We talk about this uh, often. These... Um, these these shot prop guys that are a little bit uh too juicy to take as singles but i think you know two and a half put that in with something or do a, a same game parlay with the the top line has been pretty successful for us for kaprizov and matt boldy in there we had a big boldy game the other day um quick question here and then we'll wrap up with the, the final two games it's still early i think you know, we need to know matchups i need to know matchups personally i want to see them um, but I'll talk first. The two futures that I, two of the three, we have a couple long shots in there. Long shot. I had the Kings, I think at 45 to one, not really feeling them. Uh, don't love their game. Pierre Luke bought a great game yesterday and, and more with the hat trick, but I just, the goaltending is too inconsistent. looks like they may have to play the Oilers again, a third year in a row. I don't know if they'd beat them. If they play Vancouver, maybe, but the two teams that I've been riding all year, start of the season, is the two teams that we just talked about a lot on the show, Dallas and Florida. I like both of those squads. Um, a team that has jumped into the conversation for me lately that I didn't think would, but I needed to see what they had to do at the deadline was Carolina. And they were aggressive. Unlike in years prior, they weren't. Getting Gensel, getting Kuznetsov, those guys got multiple multiple cups you brought in. Uh, defense is good. It's going to be about the goaltending, of course. But those are the three teams I really like. I'll probably fade the Canucks, the Jets, the Avs. West's going to be tough. Vegas is going to be a tough out, but I'd say Vegas, Dallas, Florida, and Carolina are my are my top four. I put Colorado at five, maybe. What you got? Uh, I would say in the West, I'm going to go Dallas and Vegas, and in the East, I'm going to go Florida and actually New York Rangers. I, I mean, Sturkin. Yeah, I still think is the best goal in the league. I think Andre Miller took a big step. It, it's going to be like they just their their defensive core is really good, and Adam Fox is 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 incredible. And uh, Panarin has gone cosmic this year and is shooting the puck too. Lafreniere, you know, turning into to who a lot of people thought, me included, he could be. Kako getting healthy, and like they're just. I think the Rangers are a really good team. And I mean, the NHL wants it to be Dallas and, and New York, right? Like it's two massive markets in the, in the United States playing for the Stanley cup, people that pay it into, um, you know, escrow. They want that too. Should be good. Uh, we both seem to be on Dallas and I think as a show, we really like where the stars are at. Uh, it's just uh, all about Ottinger, uh, but lately he looks good. Maybe he's heating up at the right time. And if he can look like the Jake Ottinger that almost did they beat the flames? I forget. I don't know if they beat the flames in the opening round, but he was, yeah. I think Calgary snuck by, but he was unbelievable uh, in that first round. I think they snuck. I think Calgary snuck by. They had the, the Johnny Hockey Kachuk and Lindholm line I was cooking for him. Right. Uh, Duran is a little bit juiced. I, I don't mind a K Man corner. He's minus 145 for a point. I was looking at him this morning. I kind of had him circled there with a pencil, but I just didn't lock it in. I think, you know, with with McKinnon, a two point night, uh, Duran could certainly fall into a, a, a point. I would rather, honestly, bet Duran for an assist. I think he's just more likely to get an assist than a goal. It, it is 
a little heartbreaking when you pick somebody to get an assist and they score a goal and you feel like you're on them getting a point. It's like, oh my goodness, why didn't I just pick the assist? Minus 145 at DraftKings for the assist, plus 130 for the Apple um, for uh, Juren there. You know, Eric Sinek does seem a little, uh, he is quiet. I think he's still a little hurt. I mean, he's only played three games since he missed a couple weeks. I think he's really just, you know, powering through, right? As As the best defensive forward on the team, needing to win out basically to make the playoffs. I think he's just powering through uh, something at the moment. So yeah, he hasn't been shooting as much, uh, but Caprice off and Boldy are on a heater. So he may fall into a point there tonight. All right. A couple more games and we will wrap up uh, Calgary and Winnipeg. Uh, this one is happening in the peg and they are favorites here. What you have on your card, Kyle Connor? Man, Jets lines, every time I look, they're different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter with the liner. I mean, he can play by himself. I'm still going to bet on him and score. Kyle Connor at 140 and Mark Scheifele at 195. Unbelievable goal the other day. Um, he's starting to, like, really be good at the right time for Winnipeg. I mean, they're they're in a wild tailspin compared to where they were, you know, a month ago, but that's hockey. Uh, Calgary, uh, I'm going to go Kadri at 230 and Sharon Grovich at plus 300. Nice. I'm not going to pick any uh, Flames because they burned me their day in a good spot. I thought they were going to get a couple goals from me and they didn't do anything. So I'm off them. That's it. Calgary, not doing it. Uh, as for the Jets seen here today, uh, the first line's kind of interesting to me. Shifley, Ehlers, and Gabriel Velarde. I do like uh, the makeup of that line. I agree with you. Kyle Connor uh, can play with absolutely anybody. Uh, man, the, the Jets uh, have been, man, they're hurting. I know they, they beat L.A. 4-3. Maybe that will get them going. Before that, uh, they had six straight losses. And this team just hasn't been able to score. Like, even when they went on that run in the middle of the season where they had, what, 27, 28 games of three goals or fewer, like, they weren't winning games like 8-1, 7-1. They were just winning games 3-0, 2-1, and 3-1, thanks to Hellebuck. Good defense, uh, but there is good, good value. Tending. Yeah, that's it. Uh, there is good value on Ehlers tonight, minus 105 for a point. He's got points in three of four, five of seven, and three, five, eight. Looks like eight of 12. He's minus 105 for a point. And I know velarde has been pretty quiet, but he is uh, he's still a really good player, uh, getting opportunity on the first power play, getting opportunity to play up on that top line tonight. And he is minus 120 for a point. So just two games back since missing uh, about a month with an injury. Scoreless in those two games, but six shots, 17 and 18 minutes played. Uh, so those are my two guys for tonight for the Jets. And I'll probably do something on that Jets top line. Maybe maybe a two-point thing. When, when I take a, a single player like Ehlers and a single player like uh, Velarde, I won't put them all into a single because I don't want to put I don't want to be invested too much. Like if none of those guys score, that's three bets lost. But if Ehlers and Velarde get a point. And then, hey, they have a two-point night, then then we're laughing. So take the two singles and maybe a little bit of sprinkle on, on the two-point night for those. Uh, I think the Jets will win the game here tonight. Uh, next, St. Louis and Nashville. Take her away. Preds at home against the Blues. This is a, this is a big one for the Blues. Big one for the Blues. And, I mean, look, I mean, Preds, they're on a Blues. Are they hurting now? Right? Like they, 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 need to, uh, they need to get a win here. Um I think Nashville wins this. I think Burnett will have them ready to play. I think they're a better team than St. Louis. Um, I understand St. Louis has got more to play for, but the Preds need to get a win here and get get rolling again. Um, St. Louis side, I'm going to go Cairo at 220, Butch Navich at 220, Nashville, Forsberg, of course, at plus 115. And Cody Glass has played very well. He's back from injury. He's playing on that top power play. Um, kind of the last time you seen him in full flight, he scored a hat trick and was crying at rink side. It was a really cool moment for him. Um, mostly I like it because he's playing top six and top power play and he's plus four seventy. So like I like Nyquist at minus one fifty. Again, it's kind of at the the mark where it's like, ah, eh, maybe I'll pass, but I think he I mean just the the track record. I, mean, I don't want to talk about him anymore because I just feel like we've annoyed people so much about him. Uh, but minus 150 for a point. I mean, he didn't get a point in his last game, but he had a one, two, three, four, five, eight game point streak. He had, he had five goals over that span. Like, what a season, man. Like, got to be one of the most shocking 
one of the most surprising seasons, I think, from a player. Not that I felt like he was written off, but he was just a cheap signing, right? A cheap addition, and he's moved himself up the lineup, and he's just been he's been uh, contributing and, and playing really good. Yeah, I wonder about the Preds, man. Like, they peaked. People will say they peaked too early. They needed to peak. We talked about that. They needed to go on this run yep. to make the playoffs. Uh, but over the past three games, like, man, they've allowed 18 goals uh, and three, like, kind of lopsided losses there. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, maybe maybe the Blues are interesting as a dog here tonight, but I look at the lineup in St. Louis and I don't really, uh, I don't really feel too confident about any bets here or any picks tonight. I'd say, I mean, Jake Neighbors burned us a couple weeks ago, a few days ago against the uh, the Sharks. Silly too, you know, play by me. Uh, plus one ten for a point. Playing with playing with Robert Thomas. That's those are the two guys for me. We'll go. Neighbors plus one ten, and we'll go Nyquist. Both sides of it minus one fifty. A little bit of juice on, juice on both sides. Preds over three and a half goals tonight. I say yes. Yeah, I don't know. I, EY says yes. Go with EY. I'm a little bit uneasy about it. I don't know. It's like some Bennington's been actually sneaky good, but he's been he's been he was sneaky good. Yeah, yeah. Turn to fall like, off. Nashville seems to play in these high total games. He says, yeah, he's in Robert Thomas and Kyra are the only two blues that I like. I mean, yeah, the only two blues. I mean, Buchnevich has been pretty good lately, but Robert Thomas is, yeah, those are the two guys. Kyra disappointing season for sure. I know that the, the yeah. fans were on him and he was in tears earlier in the year and, and yada, yada, but uh, love Nyquist, but he's no Forsberg. Forsberg's on a, a level uh, on his own in, in Nashville for sure. He's the heartbeat. Uh, I'd say Yossi as well. No juice when you win means I'm on Nyquist point as usual. Hey, we'll we'll wrap that game up with that thought from Shemansky. You're right. It's all about just getting the W. Get the W. Doesn't matter how you got it. LA and San Jose wrapping it up here with the Sharks and the Kings. So Pierre-Luc Dubois kicking myself for not picking him up. Oh, my goodness. Um. Just couldn't do it. I'm in a league with three ads, EY, three ads. I picked up uh, Quinton Byfield instead. I'm like, ah, Kopitar and got Kopitar and Kempe. He'll probably hit the score sheet, you know, against the yep. Kraken. And then he's got the Sharks, right? And then I was looking at Pierre-Luc Dubois. And the only reason I didn't do it is I just didn't know about Dano. Like, if Dano plays, then he takes a spot back. And Pierre-Luc Dubois is useless on the third line. Dano, it was a late game. So I'm like, ah, I'm just not going to do it, even though I loved this matchup tonight for these these Kings players to get the back to back against the Kraken, who've been awful, and then the Blue, and, and then the Sharks, who've been awful. Um, so again, same sort of deal tonight. Like you just kind of have to wait this thing out. Is Philip Deneau going to play? Do they need to press him? Like they can win this game without him. They're going to make the playoffs. I'm sure, if he's ready to go, he wants to play. But if he doesn't play, like there's just terrific value on Pierre Luc Dubois. Plus 110 for a point, plus 210 for an assist. His shot prop is juiced. We took the juice at plus 140 last week for him to get two shots. I think it was against the Jets. He had two shots. He had three helpers last night. Like, he's got to be pretty frustrated himself. I get it. The fan base is frustrated. Maybe McClellan lost his job part of because of Pierre Luc Dubois' struggles and things, but he hasn't been playing with the good players. Doesn't get to play no. with, with Kempe, really. He doesn't play with Arvinson, who has hardly played this year, Trevor Moore. Like, he's been playing with with just average or below average play Fiala. Like there's been moments, but you know, I thought he looked really good with, with Trevor Moore last night. He had the primary assist, I think on two, uh, at least one goal for sure. He, he chipped it out. It was hard work by him, chipped it out to Moore who, who had the hat trick. So it's maybe something to keep an eye on a little bit later on, but, um, Kempe is on one and I think he scores tonight. Yeah. We're locked up there. Kempe at one forty five. And I'm going Arvidsson at plus 200. There was a, I don't remember the numbers now. That was crazy. He, he's really played. He's hurt, been hurt for the majority of the year. But it was like 90, I want to say 93% of the games he's played, he scores and win. It, w- it was really something crazy like that. He hasn't, I mean, was he played 12 games? I don't you know. But yeah. Almost every game that he's played in where he scored, they won. So, uh, Kempe, Arvidsson, plus I just love it, Arvidsson. He's awesome. Uh, San Jose, Zetterlin and Eklund again. Zetterlin's at 320. Eklund's at 380. They're going to be good players. I think Zetterlin's kind of already arrived. 
Um, he just plays yeah, like a really bad team awesome. that nobody cares about. Um, yeah. so those, that's the guys I'd go with tonight. Um, pretty good value on like more minus 140 for a point. Uh, Byfield minus 150 for a point. We just talked about Nyquist with the juice. Like I, I'd say Trevor Moore hits the score sheet tonight. I think Byfield probably does as well. Kempe, I saw the comment uh, from K-Man. I think, um, yeah, he, he. I was I was on it too. Uh, Kopitar last night screwed me five goals, no points. I, I needed it as well. Um, as I said, Kopitar, LOL. It's like, no, enough of this, Kopitar. Uh, five goals, no points. Everyone had two each. <laughs> it's the worst. I'm not laughing at you. I was on the same thing, man. I, I needed it as well. It was really bothering me. Come on, how come Kopitar hasn't hit the score sheet? Uh, I think he will tonight. I know it's tough to kind of go back down, back to it, but the fact that you can get Kempe and Kopitar plus 100 for a point at Bet365 against this team in San Jose uh is is pretty it's pretty good right there i like that one you could do like an arvidsson and more at plus 140 you could take more as a single at minus 140 i will i will take kempe and kopitar at plus 100 i will take kempe and kopitar and quentin byfield at 14 to 1 for two points i will take trevor moore at minus 140 for a point uh, I will take Fabian Zetterlin for a point at minus 110. You could do Zetterlin and Granlin at plus 170. Uh, I also think the Moore and Arvidsson at plus 140 is interesting. And if there is no Dano adding uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois at plus 325 for those guys. And now we're getting real nuts on a Thursday evening. Pierre-Luc Dubois, Trevor Moore, and Victor Arvinson for two points each at 30-1. to 1. And I like the Kings. I don't care that they played last night. I don't care that they're going to go to David Riddick, uh, Big Dave save. I'm going to stream him. I'm going to pick him up. I uh, hope that he gets the W, and I think the Kings uh, will win the hockey game. I think they've been playing a little bit better lately. They ended the three-game stretch there last night. You're not, you're not nuts means you already hit that one at 30-1. to 1. Is that the, the Pierre-Luc Dubois? You gotta hope that Dano doesn't play. You could cash that one out, I think. If Dano plays, he might be screwed there, but I think Dano will sit out and we'll ride that one together, brother. Who wins the heart? Matthew's 20 to 1. He's going to break 70 goals, which hasn't been done in how long? I think 93, 94. Timu Solani scored 74 as a rookie. Um yeah, I I agree. I think Mac is the I think Mac's gonna win it. I think you real make. I think you can make a case for any of these guys. I think maybe yeah. the voters are just they'll, they'll probably be tired of of McDavid. Ah, McDavid did it again, but other guys have done what McDavid is doing or doing what McDavid is doing this year. And I think McKinnon, the home streak, point streak that he had going on, uh, the fact that he's going to score fifty, the fact that the goaltending has been pretty brutal, um, been a one line team for most of the year. Lekkanen missed a bunch of time, rejuvenated Duran's career. I think all those things will play into play into the, the voters' mind. And I think, like, Matthew 70 is one thing, but these guys getting 130 points is, is also another thing. And Kucherov playing the first half of the season with no Vasilevsky, like, putting the yeah. team on his back. Like, I, I pretty much wrote off the bolts and said, man, I don't even know if these guys are a playoff squad this year. Uh, and Kucherov made sure even that after he came back, game. right? It was like, ooh. yeah, for sure. Uh -oh. uh, okay, there we go. Let's uh, let's wrap with some of our favorite plays and some goal scorers here uh, for sides here tonight. I like the Penguins. Let's ride this thing out with the Pens. I think they're playing some pretty good hockey. Better brand than Washington lately. Uh, another one that would probably have to sweat out here a little bit, but I do like Pittsburgh. I'm gonna ride with the LA Kings here tonight. And again, I know they played last night, uh, but you can get the. The LA Kings, I think that they're going to win on the puck line uh, tonight. So I'm going to ride with LA uh, minus 115 on the puck line. I do like the Jets uh, minus 125. I'm going to take them in regulation to win tonight. And the final game that I will take, I'm going to jump on the Panthers. I just think I know that they're struggling and Ottawa's winning some games here, but I want minus 150 for a Florida team to win i mean you get the tampa bay lightning at minus 155 as well so pretty good odds for those two uh florida teams uh to beat lesser canadian squads with caden primo between the pipes there so those are the sides and i like the under between the blue jackets and the islanders but nobody likes unders but there's one for you you guys got goal scorers <sighs> do i ever yeah, let's go uh pasta marchand gensel Sveshnikov, reinhardt kachuk 
the other Kachuk, Stutzla, Crosby, Malkin, Ovi, Strom, Kucherov, Paul, Caulfield, Newhook, Horvat, Nelson, Vorkanov, Marchenko, Kadri, Sharangovich, Connor, Shifley, Kairou, Buchnevich, Forsberg, Glass, McKinnon, Middlestat, Kaprizov, Rossi, Kempe, Arvidsson, Zetterlin, Eklund. The eight-way maniac parlay goes as follows. Pasta, Gensel, Reinhardt, Crosby, Ovi, Kucherov, Connor, Forsberg. The lock of the night to score is Forsberg, and I do have an interesting, impossible, but is it bet Dmitry Forkinov, Cody Glass, Igor Sharangovich, and Fabian Zetterlin all to score? Nice. Man, let's that one pay. Lock. That's uh <laughs> two bucks. Two bucks is eight hundred and ten dollars. Oh, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Uh plus, okay. plus forty thousand four hundred and one. <laughs> I'm here for those bets. I'm here for those yeah, little sprinkles. Fun. Why not? Uh, it is fun. Okay. Points for me, or props for me, rather. I like Tarasenko minus 125 for a point. Forget the revenge stuff. It's all about the usage bump. Minus uh, 125 for a point. I also think three shots at plus 150 is nice. Uh, Reinhardt may be gone, but three shots, wherever whatever book is allowing it, the three shots I, I like in that one. I like Pavel Zaka for a point. Uh, I like Anthony Duclair for a point. I like Slavkoski for a point. I also like Cole Caulfield for four shots and Braden Point. Uh, I don't know what the number is now, but I like him for three shots. Well, I think we're going to see a lot of offense in that game. Like Nikita Kucherov for two points is definitely in play as well. Horvat for three shots. McKinnon for a point. Um, we'll wait it out on the uh, on the Pittsburgh lines, but I do have this feeling about Riley Smith at plus 120 for a point. Uh, Nikolai Ehlers and Gabe Bellardi for a point. Uh, Nyquist for a point. Neighbors for a point, Pierre Luc Dubois point, uh, Trevor Moore point, and Fabian Zetterlin for a point. Uh, the three six five stuff. I'll give you five goal scorers. I think we did pretty good the other day doing five. Um, so I will go. Let's go with Adrian Kempe. It's kind of the chalkiest one. Adrian Kempe there for the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, I think Nikolai Ehlers is going to score a goal tonight for the Winnipeg Jets. Let's go with Tarasenko for the Florida Panthers. Let's go with uh, Braden Point for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And we'll give one more here. Uh, I want to do, I don't want to do McKinnon. Let's go, um, let's go Brian Rust uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins there. But I think that there are going to be goals between the Lightning and the Habs and the Panthers and the Sens. So I'm doing some, some smaller same game parlay stuff. Um, some stuff on the Kings, we'll do Kopitar and, and Kemp, Kempe. We'll do line two there with Pierre Luc Dubois, Arvidsson, and more. Uh, we'll go Jets top line, I think, is interesting with Shifley, Ehlers, and Velarde. Um, you know, uh, of course, Forsberg and, and Nyquist in there is is a good one. Uh, Barzell and Horvat. I think a, a sneaky little long shot, maybe Ottawa line one at plus 350 with Pinto, Kachuk, and Batherson, and a 30 to one for those guys to have the two point. My favorite smaller ones would be like a Kucherov and point. Uh, a Suzuki and Caulfield, uh, a Rust and uh, Crosby, a Kempe and Kopitar. So, like, you could just do a, a couple two leg ones, like smaller ones there. Uh, and again, it's all about just winning a little bit of cash. Crosby and Lust, Rust just do seem to uh, be pretty, pretty consistent, right? The usage is there, the ice time's there. Uh, yes, Dubois. Dubois. No loves for Leafs players. Love it. Ah, what can you say? I mean, Matthews has been awesome. No, seventy true. goals is seventy goals is is pretty spectacular. But it just so happens that there's going to be three other players with 130 points. Yep. Uh, great show as always, gents. Thank you. Let's hit the crazy eight leg tonight. Cheers. Love it, guys. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. Smash the like button. FTMBets.com for the free article uh, with a couple of plays in there and some more reasoning behind these plays. Look for that uh, and have a great weekend. And we'll be back on Tuesday. We only have a couple more episodes here before the Stanley Cup playoffs. And we'll talk some NHL bracket. We'll have a, a fun contest. We want to get you guys in as well. Uh, we will wrap with this. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. <laughs>